<laughs> what was your high school when you got into high school? What was what was your life like then? Was it starting to change, or what was that like? Yeah, I'm, I'd say when I was getting into high school, like I think I've always been really friendly. Like I'm a friendly person, and I love to meet people, make friends, make connections with people. Um, but I don't ever think I felt like part of a group. So I was kind of the flittery one that you know went around to all of the groups and was friends with all of the people. So I was never really part of something, but maybe I was part of everything, actually, now that I say that. That sounds kind of nice. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, I think sometimes I joke in my own, you know, to my friends and family that I'm kind of like the unicorn, like this unicorn that was always on the outskirts of everything, just kind of looking and different than everyone else. And um, I have a physical difference, which defined me very early on. Um, I have these little ears and it's called outer ear microtia. So I have really teeny tiny little ears. And when I was growing up, obviously I was bullied and kids called me little ears. And even into adulthood, I ran into someone like I was pregnant with my second child in my thirties and someone called me little ears. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? So, I mean, little. That, that's a I very that's, that's that very too. rare, though. That I mean, you you're wearing your headsets, yeah. but you, when you showed me that, I was like, yeah. you know, I could see that. It, was it like the earlobe or the the outer mm -hmm. ear is not developed? Exactly, the outer ear portion. And so there's no like hearing problems. It has nothing to do. In fact, I think I have pretty good oversensitive hearing. It's almost like a honed in <laughs> hearing kind of sensation. Right. Um, and, and so and my husband is fabulous. He always just says, you know, you're just more evolved than the rest of us. You don't need all that extra skin around your face. So right. <laughs> I love that. And, then, you know, it gives, makes me feel better about things. But, um, yeah, I would say that that was kind of probably what maybe mentally kept me uh, thinking I was different than everyone else and kept me on the outside. Right, right. Now, you got married at 19. And that right out out of high school, probably right afterwards. Yeah. And uh, how, how, what was that? What, you know, what, what happened there? You know, as far as I, we know about the volatility, but like, let's talk about the if you get into you know how you met and and the right, decisions right? you make <laughs> at that point that you're at the crossroads of you know you're not knowing obviously yeah. you know what's about to happen. Let's get into that. So after I graduated high school, I followed a boy to California. And he and we ended up living with his mom. And where, where, where are you from, real quick? Where'd you guys follow? I'm from um, from Reno, Reno. And he Nevada. lived in Reno also. Uh, and yeah, and he lived in Reno at the time, but his family was from the East Bay area, okay. and so we moved back to the East Bay area. And um, he got in trouble with the law, mm -hmm. and I was just there by myself, floating around California as a 19 year old. Um, and I met a gentleman, um, and he was just as far as like his group of friends and things, he was kind of like the leader of his group, you know, just this like tough guy that I was attracted to. And so, um, wait, real quick, became, I'm so I get know, caught up in this story. You followed a boy to, you know, went into California, but he got in trouble with the law, and then he was, did he go to jail? And while yeah. he's in, so while I never he's in jail, <laughs> and I get this straight, while he's in jail, then you met another guy. Yeah. Who's also yeah. not so oh, hot. So not, not so, not so, not such a great yeah. situation. No. Real, do you, at this point, did you say, I like bad boys or what, what am I, either you try to yeah, date your mom or your so. dad, who was the bad guy <laughs> that, you know, that's Freudian for you, you know, the personality. Yeah, that definitely who, is. Who, no, my dad, dad. my dad. Okay. Um, he is at, currently right now, he is a retired major general. He was the commander of the Reno Air National Guard. He was, you know, I'm the general's daughter, basically. And so I'm un, like unapproachable and to people in Nevada who know my dad. And I'm just, it's very kind of just like, you know, ah, Sarah, Sarah's dad. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, for him, he was like thousands of people's bosses in Reno. So a lot of people just kind of, um, yeah, I ended up just leaving because it was it was too much. Um, it was too much pressure on me to not be in the Air Force. I mean, he never said he wanted me to be or pushed me to do anything. Like I said, they were so career minded. Bless their hearts. I mean, they're great parents. They loved me and took care of me. But at the same time, I, I don't think that they, I think parenting then was a thing that you had to do. 
it wasn't a thing that you wanted to do or that you put your time and right. effort and energy into. It was just something that happened because it was real. It was life and it was going right. on. And so I kind of feel like that's where I was. I was just move moving, uh, you know, through life because that's what I was supposed to be doing. And but yeah, I was very rebellious. I was very and I was a good student. I wasn't like on drugs or a flunking out of school. Like I was a good student and, um, you know, nice person. But yeah, I did like the bad boys. And I thought that, you know, probably the attention that I didn't get from my dad was what I was searching for uh, in random men throughout my life. Got so, it. So, oh, you, Freud so you meet me, this right? guy now that, you know, that's uh, a leader of this group. What kind of group are you talking about here? 